What's up guys, Cirrus here. Well, as pretty much everybody could expect when we did the votes for the last video, William Lane Craig got a single vote in the polls and a couple of votes in the comment section. Every other vote pretty much went to Matt Dillahunty, so there you have it. Pretty much everybody thinks Matt would win, but that's not really surprising given my audience. With that said, guys, let's go ahead and get right into... This feels really weird. I think there's something wrong. Oh crap, my avatar. I, uh, uh... Here. Intro, come on, take care of this, please, please. Well, aside from hiding behind a cartoon avatar, because, well, let's be honest, I'm a pretty ugly hobbit in real life, sometimes I find myself bashing my skull against the rhetoric wall of philosophy. And the particular bit of inanity that I would like to talk about today is called Clifford's Principle. In its most simple form, Clifford's Principle states that it is wrong, always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe anything on insufficient evidence. Which essentially means that it is wrong for anyone to believe at any point, at any time, that it is a bad idea to subscribe to my channel. This is shown through the sufficient evidence that I upload on every Monday and Thursday, and you want to be notified whenever I upload. Now whether or not you want to be notified so that you can legitimately watch my stuff and say that you like it, or if you just want to troll me in the comment section, either one is perfectly fine with me. I would argue that in both scenarios, you do have sufficient evidence that there is good reason to subscribe. Although with Patreon, that might fall under justified true belief, which I might cover in a future video. Needless to say, Clifford's principle stems from an essay that is remembered for a couple of things, a story and a principle. The story in Clifford's essay, where the principle is derived from, is about a ship owner who, at one point in time, was inclined to sell tickets for a transatlantic voyage. The ship he was selling the tickets for, though, wasn't in the best of shape, and he wasn't really sure that it was sound enough to actually make the voyage. He knew that the repairs would cost a lot, and would probably delay his ability to make any money on it. The ship owner, however, did manage to push all of his worries aside and form the sincere and comfortable conviction that his vessel was thoroughly safe and seaworthy. He decided to go on with the original idea and sell the tickets anyway, and then he decided to collect the insurance money when the ship inevitably sank. Now, if we refer this back to the principle at hand, it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe anything on insufficient evidence, we do see that he was completely wrong to believe that the ship would make it across sea. Now, I do typically hold that the belief that somebody has isn't something that they necessarily choose. For instance, try incredibly hard to believe that Australia doesn't exist, and if you're not a flat earther, this is pretty difficult. It's certainly not something you can do on the first try. For anybody familiar with the original purpose behind Pascal's wager, stay tuned, it's going to come up here in a second. Before we dive into an atheist's favorite subject, Pascal, let's finish with Clifford. The issue that Clifford holds with the ship owner is that the ship owner did not acquire his belief that the ship would make it through any honest investigation. He simply had an end he wanted to meet, and the means to that end were convincing himself that he wasn't making an unethical decision. This is essentially the same type of mindset that comes from a used car salesman selling a car that they know has bad and faulty brakes, and not in selling the car to a new customer, letting him know that the brakes do in fact need work and it might not necessarily be roadworthy. But the other side of the story is, what if the ship had actually made it? And Clifford says that the ship owner would be just as guilty even if the ship had made it. This is because while Clifford is going to hold the ship owner accountable for the lives that were lost if the ship did in fact sink, Clifford also holds the ship owner accountable for the way he came across his particular methods for believing things. In fact, in the essay itself, Clifford directly states that the ship owner is equally guilty and equally blameworthy for simply believing on insufficient evidence that the ship would even make it in the first place. There is a second side to the coin of Clifford's principle though, actually it's aptly named Clifford's other principle. It states that it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to ignore evidence that is relative to their beliefs, or to dismiss relevant evidence in a facile way. This is basically saying that if somebody comes up with evidence that directly contradicts your current viewpoint of the world, and you ignore it simply because you want to hold onto your own viewpoint, this means that you would be just as blameworthy as a ship owner who sells his ship and sends it off with a bunch of passengers on it, possibly to their death, because you're actively ignoring evidence that contradicts your particular worldview. This is something that we can see in young Earth creationists and flat earthers all the time. There is a constant stream of evidence that is actively against their particular worldview but they will hold on to it under all circumstances. In very rare circumstances will you find somebody from one of these camps who will honestly work their way out of their belief system and into actual facts. 
My typical response when I see something like this is to let the person in question know that if they're having an issue squaring their belief system with reality, one of these things needs to go. And unfortunately for beliefs, they're malleable. Reality isn't. This is one reason why we can typically see it as being incredibly dishonest whenever a preacher tells his congregation to squash their doubts about their belief, simply because there's a chance that their belief will come into question and they might leave the faith. To be sure, you might leave your faith if you start questioning your beliefs hard enough, although at the same time, you might come across more rational reasons for believing your faith that go over and above simply listening to your pastor's reasons. But if your pastor is telling you not to question your own doubts, then he can be seen as incredibly dishonest. Now, I mentioned I mentioned Pascal's wager earlier, and it does factor in here a little bit. Many people have pointed out in various videos that Pascal's wager is a false dichotomy, and let me explain. For those who are unfamiliar, the modern version of Pascal's wager basically states that there are four scenarios. Either God exists, and you die, and you believed in him, and then you get a reward. God exists, you die, and you didn't believe in him, and you get punished. God doesn't exist, and you believed in him, and nothing happens. God doesn't exist, you didn't believe in him, and nothing happens. Obviously, all of these scenarios would happen post-mortem. Many atheists and skeptics, and even some theists, will be quick to point out that this is a false dichotomy of options. Since Pascal's wager is assuming a monotheistic god, and even further assuming possibly the Christian god, when there are obviously thousands of other options besides that. That argument has been made several times, and I don't necessarily need to get into it right now. I think that it's just safe to say that a false dichotomy is not a good argument in and of itself. The tricky bit, though, is when we delve into the past on Pascal's Wager and see what its original form was trying to do. I will provide a link to an article about Pascal's Wager in the description so you can research further if you want, but Pascal, as far as I can tell, didn't necessarily believe that you could truly convince yourself to believe something. Or at least, he didn't deem that it was just that easy. Pascal's Wager, in its original form, was meant to be a habit-forming mechanism that would slowly convince you that you did believe in a particular deity in order to receive the rewards in the afterlife. Given that every other scenario of non-belief or God's non-existence had no reward or, in fact, had a punishment, so the only positive outcome could be garnered through belief. But can you see how this ties into Clifford's principle and why we might have some issue with this entire approach behind belief? If somebody is employing Pascal's wager as a method to convince themselves eventually that they do believe in this particular deity, are they honestly coming to that belief? You can let me know in the comment section below what you think, but honestly, I don't think that's an honest way of coming to any type of belief. Again, the principle does state that it is wrong, always, everywhere, and for anyone to believe on anything without sufficient evidence evidence, and through Pascal's wager, you're not believing on anything with sufficient evidence, you're believing simply as a means to an end, no different than a shipbuilder believing that his ship would be seaworthy enough to get people across as a means to an end of appropriating money. I once had a conversation with a friend of mine who is a theist, and he's actually a pretty great guy, and I don't want to name drop him here because, well, private conversations are private, but he had mentioned that he was having a hard time squaring evolution with his theistic beliefs. Now, this particular individual is not a young earth creationist, nor would I ever add that pejorative term to their particular belief system. But even as an old earther, they were having trouble accepting the theory of evolution as a fact and then squaring it with their beliefs retroactively. Now again, as I've said in earlier videos, unless I find a particular faith to be harmful in and of itself, I'm not going to tell somebody to leave their faith outright. But as I said earlier in the video, I did let him know that in a situation like this when you're trying to square your belief with reality, one of those things is malleable and the other is not. And as every branch of biology is concerned, evolution is both a theory and a fact. And again, facts of reality are not malleable. So at this point, we can apply Clifford's principle to this particular friend of mine. It is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone to ignore evidence that is relevant to his beliefs, or to dismiss relevant evidence in a facile way. Now, he's definitely not being dismissive in this scenario, but what is happening here is that they're having an issue with evidence that they are having to actively ignore in order to keep their current belief model. The belief itself can change to fit the evidence, but the evidence cannot change to fit the belief. We do know a subset of people who do try to change the evidence to fit their belief, and we call them Hovenites. Or Hamanites, if you prefer that flavor. Or maybe Comfortites. 
Anyway, I hope you get the picture. Now, Clifford's principle can't just be applied to the God belief itself, it can also be applied to the opposite. If somebody simply says they have a lack of belief in God, that's one thing. But when an atheist takes the positive stance that there are, in fact, no gods, not only do they, in fact, have a burden of proof now that they are making a claim, but as it is a belief claim, Clifford's principle would state that it is wrong for them to have that actual belief without sufficient evidence. I am not this particular flavor of atheist, but I do know many who are. Luckily, there are actually some arguments that work in the favor of atheism here, though. There's always the divine hiddenness argument, and as the phrase suggests, it basically refers to the hiddenness of God, or the fact that God is hidden, absent, or silent. And if something is hidden, absent, or silent, then there's really no evidence to believe that it exists in the first place. In fact, Skellenberg actually argues in his book, Divine Hiddenness and Human Reason, that since there are non-believers who are capable of a personal relationship with any type of God, and do not actively resist that relationship, yet are still unconvinced of God, then there must not really be a God in the first place. These are people who are not being subject to the negative aspects of Clifford's other principle. They are actively accepting any and all evidence that would contradict their personal worldview. Yet none of it seems to arise, and thus are justified in their belief that there is in fact no God. I know that we're delving into a whole lot of different philosophical terms, and I'm hoping that the more rhetoric-heavy episode isn't really weighing on you guys terribly much. Another argument that an atheist could have that would lead them to the logical conclusion of there not being at least an all-loving God would be either the logical or the evidential problem of evil. Now there's an entire video topic there and a conversation that can be had, and I'll probably tackle that in a later episode. I did reference the problem of evil briefly in my video, God is a Contradiction, where I briefly went over the fact that an all-loving God could not have either created hell or a world in which himself as an omnipotent being did nothing to stop the evil that does in fact exist in the world. So if you are an atheist who does positively assert that there are no gods, there are arguments out there that you can use and they are thoroughly convincing, though I would implore that you always be open to all types of evidence. Note that I said the word evidence though, not arguments. Arguments are not in and of themselves evidence. Sorry, Craig, the Kalam is not evidence for God. Well, guys, I hope that wasn't terribly much for you guys to digest. There's a lot of literature on all of these subjects. I'll actually be providing articles below about the ethics of belief and Clifford's principle and the hiddenness of God argument, as well as a link for my God is a Contradiction video for those who are interested. Before we end the video, though, I do have a bit of a shout out. I know that it's a larger channel than mine, but for those who have not seen him yet, please go watch Steve McRae. He's actually the one that suggested the topic of today's video. Links will be in the description for his channel, as well as everything else that I've mentioned before. And before we go, guys, of course we need to get into the next contest. This is going to be one of the ones that shapes the content that's on this channel, so please remember to vote using the R card button in the top right hand corner, and please feel free to discuss your vote in the comment section below. Do you guys want to see more philosophy on my channel, so I can try to break down some more complex arguments and make them a little more digestible, or should I focus more on video responses? I'll also provide a third option this time. Would you like to see an even mix of both? So this time we We've got a three-way battle that will decide the fate of the channel. And since you're here, then you obviously watched the entire video to the end, so thank you very much for doing so. I'd like to give a special thank you to all of my patrons as well. You guys seriously make it worth it to put in the time and effort it takes to keep this channel alive. You also make it worth every second it takes to pour through philosophical rhetoric in these documents in order to come to you with a video each week. You guys really do make all the lost sleep worth it. And if you're not too busy in the comment section arguing about what direction I should take the channel in, please take some time out of your day to thank the patrons that are on this channel as well. If they happen to be skimming through the comment sections, I'm sure they would appreciate that. As always, guys, I thank you all for watching to the end of the video, and I will see you all next Monday. As we move into the Patreon slides, everyone, as always, insert end of video tagline here.